And to discuss the reaction of the business community to last night's budget and the national skill shortage, I was joined just a short time ago in the studio by the Chief Executive of the Australian Industry Group, Heather Riddart. Heather Riddart, thanks for joining us. It's good to be here, Tony. Uh, now, the latest Skills Australia report estimates that we will need an extra 2.4 million skilled workers by 2015 to meet the manpower needs, particularly of the mining boom. It's worth repeating 2.4 million skilled workers. Where are they going to come from? Well, it's a very formidable task. I mean, at any one time, we have about 1.7 million people training in TAFE and we have others in other institutions, higher education institutions. But what this is highlighting is that this is a major economic issue for Australia and the skills, that, the jobs that are going to be created are not just um, the skills of the past, they're the skills of the future. They'll have more skills in them. And, uh, you know, we don't simply have at the moment the wherewithal um, within our existing workforce to satisfy that skills. So the skilling task for Australia is a major one, and it's quite right that the government has found made that really the a central focus of its budget. Well, the centrepiece of uh, the last night's budget, you just pointed out, was skills package is expected to deliver 130,000 new training places for Australian skilled workers over that same period. Mm -hmm. Now, if Skilled Australia is right, that's just a drop in the bucket. Well, it, well it's not a, it is not a drop in the bucket. It's quite a, a bigger number of uh, training places on top of what's already happening out there in industry land. At any one time, there's about 450,000 apprentices and trainees being trained. There's, there's a lot of people in the training only system. Half but the, will... Only half of the apprentices yeah. evidently finish their courses. Well, indeed, and in some areas it's lower than that. It's 30%. I mean, in the engineering trades, it's higher than that. So it's an ICT, it's higher than that. So it, it does mix, but that's a challenge of itself. And we do have a major skills gap, and we have, a, we have also have an existing workforce where some 46% of them cannot read a standard operating procedure of a manual in a factory. So we have a, a, a lack of foundation skills in our existing workforce. We have an emerging skills gap in areas where the skill content of jobs is rising. So it is, a one, it is clearly Australia's major um, capacity constraint. I'm starting to think that one of the biggest stories from last night's budget was the Immigration Minister's approval of a mm -hmm. new class of visa for foreign workers, the EMA Enterprise migration agreement. I mean, it's quite likely, isn't it, that, that perhaps hundreds of thousands, maybe even more, uh, foreign workers will start flooding into Australia under these agreements. Well, the Australian Industry Group advocated that the skilled migration planning target be um, put back to pre-GFC levels when we were facing big skill shortages like Skills Australia was advocating then. We also, and we, and we were pleased that the government went some way to do that, the lower end of the range, but th that's, that's now set. We also have the 457 v visa arrangement, which is flexible, and, and the flood issues up in Queensland, the government freed that up and expedited um, applications under that. Now, this new enterprise-based um, um, program. It's for big projects for the resources industry, $2 billion and over. It's got very uh, quite rigorous labour agreements uh, at attached to it where companies will have to demonstrate obviously a skill need, they'll have to demonstrate they'll train, they'll have to demonstrate that they'll pay people the same people as the same as Australians on those sites. So there are rigorous... But it, is but it, is is a, a, it is uncapped. It uh, is uncapped. So potentially mm. how many Well, I don't know, but I think um, it, it's going to depend on the projects and uh, what we can do to get the 1.4 million Australians who are um, out of work or who are looking for more hours of work into the workforce. We've got some regions, you know, I mean, we've got regions in Australia, that Western Melbourne, Western Sydney, with 10 plus percent unemployment. In Nambucca, it's got 10 percent unemployment. Ballarat, I was there yesterday, nearly 8 percent unemployment. There's a lot of resources around in Australia which need to be soaked up, and we need policies to give those people right. skills. But, but, that, to do but it. that all takes time, and these projects are coming yeah. through very quickly. Uh, so well, the construction phase of them, Tony, will be very resource intensive and the construction phase is really going to hot up next year and the year after. That's right. And, and, that's and, and that issue. is when the, mm. the foreign workers and what we're essentially talking about a, a force of guest workers. Well, look, I, I think we have to keep this in perspective. The first priority is to train our own people and this skills issue is not going to go away in two years' time when a, when a few ports are built. It's going to be there with us for quite a considerable period of time. Their workforce is ageing a lot of the Skills Australia jobs are created because people are retiring. You know, there's all these elements to it. This immigration will be a complementary measure and certainly we need some of these special programs fairly, very carefully um, managed to satisfy these but specific can you see skills. it's going the same way as, uh, as Saudi Arabia, for example? Well, I hope we don't. Having a class of guest workers in this yeah. country, possibly more than a million guest workers in this country, working not only in the mining industry but across 
other sectors include, that are, where, where there's labour shortages, like, for example, aged care. Or caring more generally. I mean, we have a lot of um, temporary people in Australia doing caring, and I know a fair bit about that. Um, but I, I think we can do that. But one, we, what, the thing we have to avoid is creating a second-class citizen in Australia. And there's been a lot of work done over the last year or two to toughen up and tighten up these programs. Industry has been deeply involved but in are, that. But these are, these are strictly non-citizens. Yeah, but still. Um, I mean, isn't that, isn't that yeah. part of the problem? I mean, w would you... Would industry, well, in, would, it, would industry right. endorse hundreds of thousands of foreign workers, uh, possibly more than that, possibly more than a million foreign workers coming in to work in to fill these massive skills gaps? Because we're not only talking about 2.4 million workers when? needed in the next four years, we're talking about 5.2 <laughs> million needed up to, uh, up to 2025. Well, that's the retiring of, of the workforce. And, but mm. the training system can go a long way to meeting this, and that's clear from the Skills Australia report. But immigration will have a role to play. I don't anticipate hundreds of thousands of people coming in under these programs. Programs. But whatever we do, we have to make sure they're very well controlled, that we have the proper agreements in place, that the training arrangements are, are in place to support that so that Australians are being trained up uh, alongside these, these uh, workers coming does it, in. Does it worry you then that it's uncapped? Because there is no, no limit, currently no limit whatsoever on the numbers brought in by the mining industry. Well, look, I, I think the, I don't, it doesn't worry me that they're uncapped. What worries me is if they're not properly controlled and managed, and I think that's when they'll get a bad reputation and the whole system will break down. Industry's been involved in the design of this program, quite closely involved in it, and I think we're satisfied that it'll work for both sides. But Australia has to give priority to training its own people, and that is built into this arrangement. But, of course, Australia is at the same time... Uh getting involved in training Indian workers. Mm -hmm. um, they're going to be centres which train up to 100,000 skilled Indian workers mm -hmm. per year. Mm -hmm. uh, there's already talk of 30,000 trained and skilled Indian workers coming to Australia in the short term. Mm. Should that happen, will it happen? Well, we've had a lot of Indian workers come into Australia under a range of visa arrangements, including student visa arrangements, and I was there yesterday in Bal or on Monday in Ballarat when a lot of them graduated. It was fantastic. I don't, I don't think we should be worried about this. This is globalisation. If we don't open our borders, we've got 4.8% unemployment, 4.5% coming up, and probably trialling less than that. If we, we have to give first priority to training our existing people, then we have to be willing to take in workers from other countries. That is a good thing, but the most important thing is we, we do it in a uniquely Australian way, a proper way, and uh, make sure the conditions are right and fair and safe. My final quick question on the budget. The opposition has criticised uh, the government for not cutting enough from government spending and government programs. What effect would it have had, in your opinion, on the economy if the cuts have been much deeper? Look, I'm rather worried about it. We have um, contractionary monetary policy with, with every likelihood we'll see more rate rises. We have the dollar um, hitting record highs at dollar ten, set to go through that level again and, and stay there for a protracted period of time, putting further um, pressure on industry. We have credit card um, rates going up by 0.37 since the last rate rise, putting more pressure on consumers and on industry. And we already have a contractionary fiscal policy, and on any measure it is contractionary. They're, they're taking quite a lot of out of the um, public spend. So you're so, saying, so so I'm, and just I'm, very all, briefly, all you're, saying, you're saying the opposition's mm. got it wrong well, in saying, saying there should have been deeper cuts to the budget. I'm saying that the economy is fragile under the aggregate. All this has been governed at the aggregate. And under the aggregate, there's wide dispersions in employment, in industry performance, in industry sector performance. And I think we have to be very careful that we, we don't um, be too um, unbalanced about this. Now, I, I think the budget get, broadly gets it right. And I think uh, the, the, together with the, the stance of monetary policy, we are in quite a, a contractionary phase so in So deeper Australia. cuts, just to get this very briefly, mm. deeper cuts would have been damaging to the economy, in your opinion? Well, deeper cuts could have potentially been damaging. I think we have to be cautious because of the difference in performance across the economy, across states, the, the so-called multi-speed economy, the patchwork economy. And I think it's hiding and masking quite a lot of, lot of tough times out there for a lot of businesses and a lot of people. Heather Ritter, we'll have to leave you there. Thank you very much. My pleasure, Tony.